lips, anoint my mouth, to anoint my heart, God, to speak the things that you have me to speak to the people tonight. So I went on home and, and uh, I got in the bathtub and I was sitting there and that water felt good. How many knows when you got a bad back? Water yeah, it feels, does, brother. Water feels good. Yes, it does. I was sitting there in that hot tub of you. water, big old tub of water, and just relaxing and taking it easy. My back felt so much better. And I was sitting there just thinking, and all of it. I, I asked, I, I said something to the Lord. I said, Lord, if I know you'd be there tonight, and you'd be with me, and you'd touch me, and so that you could speak your word through me, I'd get up and go. And he said, why don't you get up and go? Man. <laughs> so that's why I'm here tonight. Praise the Lord, because God told me to come on anyway. How many know we got to trust Him? Whatever he says, that's what we got to do. Man. We'll put our trust in God because, you know, we can't put our trust in everything else because everything else can fail us. Yeah. Our money can fail us. Our friends can fail us. Our economy can fail us. Even our government can fail us. But God will never fail us. Amen. How many here tonight have a problem? Anybody? Amen. Yes. Man. Hands all over the house. Amen. we got problems. How many knows that the devil's on your trail when you're serving God? He tries every way he can to get your mind off God. Whether it's in your body or whether it's in your mind, your health, or whether it's in problems at home or work, or whatever it might be. How many knows that every time we turn around, Satan is trying to get our minds off of God and what, what the Lord would have us to understand and what He'd have us to hear? How many knows that even when things look bad, that don't mean they are? Let me say that again. How many knows when things look bad, that don't mean they are? The Bible says, how many believe what this Bible says? Yes. Hold, it, hold your Bible up. Amen. Everybody, hold your Bible up. You got one, hold it up. How many believe what this Bible says? Amen, brother. You believe what the Bible Amen. says? You know what it says in every one place, Sister Sandra? All things work together for good to those who are called of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what that tells me? That if God allows what some seems bad to come to me, sometimes it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good thing. Yes. The devil's going to try you. He's already tried you today, has he not? Did he try you yesterday? You know what he's going to probably do tomorrow? Try you again. If you're on God's side, the devil is on your trail. That's Amen. just the way it is. We got an enemy. How many knows we're fighting the enemy? Not flesh and blood, not a carnal man, but we're fighting the devil. That's what we're fighting in this world. Every way we turn, he tries to pop his little head up somewhere. But you know what God says about it? God says that we can have peace. And God Amen. says that we can have joy. How many Amen. believe what this Bible says? How many believe what God says Amen. about it? Yeah. Sometimes we just have to take it to God. Sometimes the doctor ain't got no answer. Sometimes Sometimes your, your wife don't have an answer. Your husband don't have an answer. Sometimes nobody else has an answer when God has the answer. I'm here to tell you tonight, if you got a problem, God has the answer. Let me say that again. I said, if you got a problem, God has the answer. But you know what it takes sometimes to get the problem answered? It takes just a little bit of waiting. You know, our time ain't always God's time. Brother Derek's been preaching a message about patience. The Bible says that we possess our souls in our patience. So sometimes we just have to believe God enough to wait. Amen. Anybody wait? Amen. Anybody believe God tonight? Amen. Sometimes we just have to trust Him when it looks bad. When it looks right. terrible. Because what the devil is saying to you is just give up. Yeah. Just turn back. You know, things might be a little bit easier if you didn't worship God so much. Has anybody had the devil to tell them that? I have. If we just back up a little bit. You know what? We don't need to back up. It ain't time to back up. It's time to go up. Hallelujah. It's time to move forward for God and not, not to believe what the devil tells us because the devil's not going to tell us nothing but a lie. Right, brother. Mom, he'll lie to you today and he'll lie to you tomorrow. Yes. The Bible says he came but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's all he does. That's all he wants to do is get in somebody's mind and cause all kinds of problems. Right. Get in 
in somebody's heart and cause all kinds of problems. Because that's what he's supposed to do. That's his job to kill, steal, and to destroy. You know why? Because he's mean. Let me go ahead and tell you if you ain't already found out. The devil is mean. And he has no love for you. The devil don't like you. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. He don't like you. And he especially don't like you if you serve the Master. And if you, if God's not got your veil, then the devil's on your trail. That's for sure. But you know what? God's got a way of turning him back. God's got a way of getting him yeah. off your case. But sometimes we just got to ask. You know, it's just simple enough to say, one day I needed something. I said, Lord, I need this. Guess what? It popped up. It's because I believe that God would supply. We're living in some trouble sometimes. And you know what? We're going to need more of God. I said, we are going to need more of God than what we do. Come on, yes. There's some people I read about in this Bible. They stood no matter what the circumstance. Come on. They stood no matter what the problem. And they wasn't about to turn back, Brother Chris, because they, their mind was set like a flint. You know what that means? That means there ain't no change in their mind, no, what, no matter what comes or what goes. They're steadfast. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. I don't want to be double-minded. I want to have my mind set straight on the Lord. And you know what that takes sometimes? That takes some getting along with God. Yeah. Sometimes it takes some praying and even some sacrificing. Yeah. You know what? God still loves sacrifice. I'm not talking about going out and kid, cat, or the dog either. Or if you got a lamb, I ain't talking about killing that, but I'm talking about just giving God sometimes a sacrifice of praise. <laughs> Sister Sandra said last Sunday that the Lord told her, spoke a word to her. Y'all remember what that word was? Does anybody remember what that word was? Rejoice. The Lord told her one word. said, Rejoice. And then she was trying to think of a scripture. And I believe it was this one right here. God gives us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. In other words, He don't want us to be burdened down with troubles and with problems. You say, but I am. I know that's why we need to praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all just turn with me if you got your Bibles. If you probably already there by now though. Chapter 30, 1 Samuel. <coughs> Or Samuel 30. I guess we're just going to have to read it a little bit, y'all. Chapter 30, start with verse 1. It talks about a man with a problem and a big one. He didn't go sit down somewhere and cry about it. Oh, he cried all right, but not to himself or somebody else. He cried out to God is what he did. He went seeking the answer for his problem. Sometimes when it looks so bad, that's what we need to do. We need to turn everything over to God. Why is this so hard tonight? Thank you, Lord. I know the devil's trying to press against us. I know he is. Mm -hmm. And I know y'all are listening. Every one of you looking straight at me. So I know it's a, it's just Satan does not want this yes. word to go across. Right. He wants That's us true. to be in a place of misery. He wants us to be in a place of sadness and discouragement. He wants us to be in a place of, uh, of depression and darkness. But God came to give us light. To give us peace and to give us joy. You know what? I want the peace. I want the joy. I thank God that right now, Brother Derek, I don't have a backache. And I praise God for it. Hallelujah. Because he's been here all day long. But thank God for his power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes we just have to trust him when we don't feel like it. Sometimes we just have to let go of it and give it to him. Sometimes the devil will tell us what's to do. We might as well just quit and give up. But let me tell you something, it ain't time to quit. It ain't time to give up. But it's time to press it in God. Hallelujah. You said this word was true. Show me that you believe it's true. Praise the Lord. Let him take away that spirit of heaviness and put you on a, a garment of praise. Praise the Lord. I believe God's in the house tonight. I don't think when we have service tonight that God left. You know what I believe? 
get here. <laughs> you say, well, I didn't say that, and that did not mean it wasn't there. That's right. Come on, brother. That's right. You don't know how many angels might have been around that car. That's right. You don't know how what God had to move out of the way to get to here, praise the Lord. But we're come to the house of God. Don't you want to praise Him tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're not in the graveyard. Thank God. Thank We're not in the hospital. Thank God. We're not in jail. Thank God. We're not in the nursing home. Thank God. We're not in a bed and unable somewhere to come to the house of God. Yeah. But I feel, I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this house. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know what I found out? There ain't no place better than being in the presence of the King. side of the bridge. It was a four-lane bridge. Might have been more than that, but it was at least a four-lane bridge. One of them was on the far side, getting ready to jump off. The other one was on the other far side, getting ready to jump off. But all at once, the car went by and said, beep! And they turned around to look. And when they turned around to see what the car was blowing at, they wound up looking at one another. And they found out they was both about to make the same mistake. And I got to thinking about something. Have you ever just went down the road and the Lord said, blow your horn? You thought, wow. You know, I just wondered. Now, I know it was a movie, but you know what? 
God works in mysterious ways. Oh, He does. Yes, He does. get to your heart. Yes, he does. Now, Sister Sandra, I'm so glad that He convicted my heart. Because now I watch them good movies instead of them bad ones. Yeah. And I tell you what, if you hang out with the right person, right. you're going to be right. Come on, that's right. If you that's hang good. out too much, too long with the wrong person, that's right. Come on. You're right. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Birds of a feather. That's true. Come on, brother. Lock together. Lock together. Praise the Lord, somebody. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. Praise the Lord. They had one woman on there didn't believe in God. She wow. seen a dead man raised. <laughs> <laughs> then she ran in the house of God, Sister Sandra, and started to pray. <coughs> or she, would, if she was apologizing to God. Yeah. Mom, you know what? I've seen some miracles too. I might tell y'all about some of them. Yeah, there are miracles if you believe in them. I believe in miracles. I believe. Don't you, Sister Sharon? I believe in miracles. Verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south in Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. They had destroyed David's home and part of his kingdom. Maybe all of it, I don't know. Amen. But they certainly set a bunch of it on fire. Man. Ain't that just like the devil? Yeah. <laughs> Try to sneak in when you ain't looking. Burn something up that you got. That's, <laughs> That's just like the devil. Come try to get through the back door. Yes. When you ain't really got your mind in the right place. Come on, brother. Something come knocking at the back door, don't answer it. <laughs> Maybe come to the front. <laughs> and have taken the women captives that were therein. Amen. They slew not any, either great or small. They didn't kill them. But they carried them away and went along their way. So when David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Can you imagine that? Being the boss, being the leader, being the one that was supposed to be watching out for everything all at once, somebody came in the back door and burned it all up and stole it and took it away. That sounds just like the devil, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, it does. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. They were upset. Mm -hmm. They were troubled. Mm -hmm. They had a problem. And they had a big one. <laughs> their wives and their children were gone. Can you imagine? Wow. Leaving home for a few days, and when you come back, there's none of your family. There. They're all gone. Got yeah. a big house full of when you left. Mm -hmm. And you come back, they've all been captured and taken away. Don't even have a house. House burnt down. And yeah, yeah, and everything you had burned. Amen. To the everything in the house, around the house, and the house to the ground. Said in David's two wives, verse five, were taken captives. I can't pronounce her name. The Jezreelites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Now listen in verse six. And David was greatly distressed. He was troubled. He had a problem. Amen, he did. He had a big problem. And Abigail, the wife of Nabal the Carmelite, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. Check it out. They were going to stone him. I mean, wasn't bad enough everything he had was gone. Children, wives, everything burned up, and now they wanted to kill David. How would you have felt if you'd been David? Not too good at this point. Kind of well, depressed. Everybody wanted to stone him. Kind of depressed. Wow. Greatly depressed. <laughs> Amen. For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Amen. He didn't go pouting somewhere, Sister Sandra. He encouraged himself. Mm -hmm. He knew where to go to for the answer to his problems. Yes. Nobody else had the answer to his problem. Nobody else could have helped him out. So he went to the source. He encouraged himself and the Lord his God. 
And verse 7 says, And David said to Abiathar the priest, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. If I'm not mistaken, that was for a priest, wasn't it? Wasn't it yeah. priest supposed to wear out of ephods? What was David it? doing with that holy garment? You know what the Bible said? He told the priest to bring it to me. Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And you know what David done? He began to wrap himself up in the glory of God. That's what he began to do. Instead of his problem getting to him and him going out and taking a gun and blowing his brains out, he didn't let that happen because he took his problem to God. He knew where the answer is. He yeah. knew where the answer lies. Sometimes, Sister Sandra, nobody else can help but God. Sometimes it takes a miracle. Sometimes we just have to pray for a while. Sometimes we just have to wait for a while and give God time to do what He's going to do. Amen. Man, sometimes we do something too hastily. Sometimes we're not patient enough to hang around and wait on God. Wow. Wow. I remember one time, I give a little testimony. Is that okay with y'all? Yeah. Some of you's probably heard it before, but some of you probably brother. haven't. It's been a long <laughs> years ago. But since the Lord brought it to my mind, why don't I just go ahead and tell you? Because it wasn't even going to come tonight. I said, won't you get up and go? <laughs> y'all ever heard the voice of God? Yeah. You know what I mean? It just does something to you, don't it? I like to just hang out any word that I know I'm going to hear. There's just something about God's voice. There's just something about God's presence that makes all the dew and the rain and all the sorrow and the darkness just kind of fade away. Yep. Yeah. The devil, he wants you to hang out in the darkness. He don't want you to come to the light. Y'all, I know most of y'all, probably all of y'all are saved. I don't know. You know. I don't. But I'm going to say he wants you to come to the light. What I mean is he wants you to come into the fullness of his peace and his joy. But you know what we've got to do to get there? We've got to do like David did and delight ourselves in the Lord. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Long years ago. I had a problem I couldn't get rid of. Come on. <clears throat> Wasn't a physical problem. It was a spiritual problem. Now I'm not talking about I was lost either. Because I was right where God wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. But a long time ago, one Saturday, I laid down across the bed. And in my sleep, I guess it was, or when I was waking up, but I heard this voice, audible voice. Wasn't nobody in the house but my wife and Stephen and Eric, and they was little beauty. I'm talking about, I think Stephen was a year old. But I heard as I was waking up, it wasn't a dream, I didn't dream it, because I was awake. And I heard a voice, Sister Sue, an audible voice speak to me just like you hear me talking to you. And it said to me, you'll lead many people to heaven, but you'll never get there yourself. If you don't think that is scary. Mm -hmm. When you just woke up and the first thing you hear and there's nobody in the room with you and you hear something like this, it becomes a problem. All I could think was, God, what have I done? God, what is it I need to repent of? What is it I need to do? I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed for about two months. All I thought about, well, I can't say all I thought about, but when that thing would come at me, Sister Sandra, I could hear that voice over and over in my head again, and it was sheer torment. Because I didn't know whose voice it was. I just knew it was an audible voice. And I knew what it said to me. It scared me. Frightened me. But I know now why the Lord allowed it to happen. Because He wanted to take a test and make a testimony out of it. And you know, I went for those two months. And I would pray and I would seek God. And I would pray nothing seemed to happen. I couldn't get, get that thought out of my head. 
And I've done just about give up. I thought, man, I'm not going to ever make it to heaven. I'm headed the other way. I hadn't done nothing, Sister Sue, that was wrong. Nothing. But I heard that voice. You know what I decided to do? I was kind of like David. I ain't comparing myself to David. But I decided that I was going to find out who that was one way or another. So I took the kids. I don't remember. Left them with somebody. When church was out, I went out to my little meeting place with the Lord, Sister Sandra. And I got out on my knees. And I stuck my head between my legs. And I began to weep. And I thought, I said, you know, when God sees you mean business. You know, sometimes we just got to mean business with God. But as I had my head between my legs, I was down on that ground and I was weeping. And I, this is the words I said. I said, God, I will not move from this spot till you give me an answer. I said, I don't care how long it takes, but I refuse to get up until you give me an answer. I'm not getting up. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not laying down. I'm going to stay right here, God, till I hear from you. And Sister Sandra, the Lord knew my heart, and He knew I was serious, and I was going to stay in that position for as long as it took. I done put up with that torment long enough, on, and I was going to get rid of it one way or another. And as I began to cry out to God, I felt the Holy Ghost when he came over me, Sister Sandra, and he just covered my whole body and I could feel him. And when his presence came up on me, all at once I seen a vision of this big old pretty rainbow. And when I saw that vision, of course my eyes were closed and I was on the ground crying out. But when I saw that vision, I knew what God was saying to me. He didn't have to speak the word. All he had to do was show me that rainbow. And I understood, Sister Sandra, exactly what he meant. I got up off the ground with my eyes still closed and tears and stopped just running down my face. How many know that sometimes we just have to get in the presence of God? Sometimes nothing else won't work but just get in the presence of God. Sometimes we don't take it serious enough. Sometimes we don't pray hard enough. Sometimes we don't seek God long enough. But God listens and He hears and He understands everything about us, Brother Kent. He knows what we're going through. But he wants to hear us anyway. And as I cried out to him, he answered me, Brother Derek. And as I was standing there, I lifted my hands in, my, in the air to praise him with my eyes still closed. I didn't turn to the right or to the left. I was just standing there with my head back just praising God and my eyes closed. All of a sudden, I opened up my eyes and there was a rainbow right there in the sky, right in a place that I was looking. Now you tell me that God can't take care of you. I'm here to tell you if you're willing to seek Him yes. and to hunger and to thirst for righteousness, yes. the Bible said you will be filled. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Oh yeah, have we got any hungry people in the house yes. tonight? Have we got anybody that really wants to fill the Holy Ghost like you did yes. when He first touched you and saved your soul? Yes. Wouldn't you just love Him to do that again? Praise the Lord. I've been asking it, Brother Derek, for quite a while now. God, do it again. Yeah. Let me feel yes. what I felt when you baptized me in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Brother Chris, I'll tell you something. Nobody moved my mouth. Nobody took a hold of it. Nobody jiggled it. But it jiggled. But God, the Holy Spirit of the living God, took that a hold to my mouth. My tongue got to rolling and it wouldn't stop. Hallelujah. I didn't want it to stop. Because there ain't no jack felt like that. Praise wow. the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Man. Praise God. Yeah. You know, God's a merciful God. You know that? Yes, He is. He's put up with me, Sister Shirley. He has. I mean, there have been times that if I'd have been God, I would have kicked me on out. I wouldn't have put up with me. I'm serious about this, y'all. God is a merciful God. And He's a gracious God. And I think God, the Bible says, that though a man, a righteous man, falls seven times, he shall rise again. Praise the Lord. Thank God He was the one that made me righteous. Sister Hope, I didn't do it myself, but He was the one that done it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
I, I, let me go on here, y'all. I got some more scripture I want to read to you. I'm going to skip over a bunch of them because I know it's kind of late. But I am going to go through the ones the Lord wants me to share with you. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Come on. Is that okay? Amen. Bless him, Lord. I've been like the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Have you ever felt anything like that? <clears throat> No. You never will. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He took a timid person like me, y'all, and put his word in my mouth. And when I feel the Holy Ghost up on me, I ain't timid no more. I ain't afraid no more. It ain't me, though. It's God. God has a way of, of getting you to do what he wants you to. <laughs> he get, he's got a way of getting you to the place that he wants to get you to. Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You still believe the word? Do you know what it says here? He's the light of your salvation. Of whom shall you be afraid? Oh, the wolf's going to come around. Yes, yes he is. Mm -hmm. I wish there was some way we could keep him away from every one of us. Amen. I wish there was a way. The Psalms said a while ago, I don't understand why the devil just won't let God's children be. Because he's trying to get them. That's why. Yes. He wants to knock them off the rock. Yes. <laughs> hang on, church. Hang on. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. Amen. What does that mean in reality? That means it didn't do them no good. Even though they came against a child of God, it didn't do them any good. All they did was just fall. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Do we believe in the same God David was talking about? If David felt that way and that peaceful, that war wouldn't bother him when his enemies came up, he knew God was going to take care of the situation. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe God can take care of that don't mean that you just ask once and run off all the time. Sometimes you have to seek the Lord for a while. Sometimes when, when I get out, I have to just wait upon the Lord. Sometimes I walk the creek bank or I walk the road or I walk to wherever I'm at, the cornfield, just listening to see what God has to say. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for He is with us. His rod and His staff, He comforts us. Can you believe that with me tonight? Praise yeah. the Lord. I remember one time, Sister Sandra, I don't know how the devil had made this such an illusion, but he did. And it was a powerful illusion. And somehow he had made me believe that the Lord had just turned me over to a reprobate mind. I'm telling you the truth. God has shown. I asked. Remember, I asked God, prove yourself to me. And He has, Sister Shirley. He's done some things. I mean, some things have come my way that I'd rather not have had to face, but I learned from them. And I've seen God deliver me out of them. I've been in the lion's den, and you have too. I've been in the fire, and you have too. Yep. You know what David said when they, uh, Daniel said when, when they said they were going to throw him in the lion's den? He said, go ahead. He opened up the windows and said, hey, I'm praying. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Would you do that? Yes, you ever been scratched by a cat? I don't think nothing hurts worse than being scratched by a cat. Nope. I mean, when that thing scratches you, once the cat gone, it hurts so bad. Maybe I'm just a wimp. <laughs> but it hurts so bad that thing will burn for 10 minutes after the cat's gone. I can't even imagine what I'm biting in me. So don't hurts. you like cats? Yeah, I like cats. I just don't like me scratched and bit by them. They mean little boogers if they want to be. 
That's right. Now you think about a little kid that weighs what? Three or four pounds? And he'll tear you up. I mean, he's all over you, biting, scratching, before you even realize it. Now you think about it. They told Daniel, if you pray anymore, you go going in the lion's den. I don't know about y'all, but I think I would have shut the windows. <laughs> but you know what Daniel did? He opened the windows. They thought Corinna there right on there. He kept on praying anyway. They told him, said, you gotta shut up. You can't pray. And he said, watch me. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing, I know. Would you do that? Do you believe God? The same God Daniel believed? Can you imagine? Getting torn to pieces by, I don't know how many lions was in that den. There may have been several of them, I don't know, but I'll bet you they were hungry. And you throw a Daniel over in there, man, that's a meal. It's a feast, come on. Think about it. Just, I mean, lions all over you, turn your thread. But instead of Daniel worrying about it, he just went on praying. You ever had the devil take you? Might as well stop. It ain't going to do you no good. You might as well quit. Your knees are hurting, you need to get up. Your back's going to be hurting in this situation you're in. You better leave this altar right now. Don't you go down there and pray. Everybody's going to wonder what you're praying about. Mm -hmm. Brother Derek said something last time he preached. I think Sunday, last Sunday night, he said there was somebody here that was timid, that was kind of just a little bit afraid sometimes to do what God wanted them to. Before we leave this place, I want you to pray for me, brother. Amen. I was out on the bridge the other day. And the Holy Ghost was there with me, Sister Sue. And I had church. Just me and the Lord. Or the Lord and me. <laughs> and I was hoping, just hoping cars would come by. And I was just hoping. I could feel the Holy Spirit so sweet I wanted to talk to somebody about Jesus. Every time a car would come by, I'd look. They wouldn't stop. They might wave their hand, but they wouldn't stop. So I hear another. I'd be praying, Sister Zanny, here come another. And I'd turn. Just hoping somebody would stop. And I had a thought, and I still don't know if it was the Lord or not. Y'all pray for me because I'm a, sometimes I am a whim. But y'all pray for me because I'm not sure it was God. But I had me a thought, Sister Sandra. And I heard something behind it. I thought about making me a little sign to get their attention. I thought about just getting me one of them poster boys. I didn't say I was going to do it, y'all. Y'all pray. If the Lord moves on me strong enough, who knows? But... I was thinking about getting me a little poster and naming it to a two before or something. Just stand there at the side of my car right in front of the bridge and just hold up that sign that said, Do you know Jesus? I bet that'll get their attention. They won't just drive right on. <laughs> <coughs> How much do we believe God? <coughs> but the devil had me it was too late that God had turned me over to a reprobate mind. Y'all know what that is, don't you? That means you'll never again feel any conviction. You won't even believe in God anymore. That would be a bad place to be. I was at the altar. I hadn't told a single soul, I promise you. I said nothing to no one, no one but God. I was at the altar and I was praying, Brother Kent. Just praying my little heart out. All of a sudden, Sister LaVon showed up again. Laid her hand up there on my shoulder. And she began to pray and speak in tongues. And then God used her mouth to talk to me. And this is what he said. And there's no way in this world she could have known what was on my heart if God hadn't told her. But she began to, God began to speak through her. And that she was, like I said, she'd been speaking in tongues. But God began to speak through her and He said to me, using Sister LaVon's mouth, God is real. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you in case you don't know it, God is real. Mm -hmm. And He began to speak to me and this is what He said. I have not. And He stopped. And then He started again. Not Sister LaVon. God using her vocal cord. And He said again, I have not turned you over. You're talking about somebody getting free. Mm -hmm. Sister Sue, I got free. Because there's no way she could have known something like that unless it had came from God. That's right. Amen. Y'all get my stories, are you? Bless you. Praise the Lord. 
I'm telling you something about the Lord, something about God, some things that God has visited me with that nothing else could have helped me with. And I couldn't tell nobody, Sister Sue. Nobody would have understood anyway. I had to deal with it on my own until finally God showed up and set me free from that thing. I didn't have to worry about it anymore. It didn't concern me anymore. God is a good God. And He's a great God. Do you believe that? Y'all believe that, don't you? Amen, brother. I'll tell you something else, too. Y'all already heard about them boys, too. But I tell you what, I would have been thinking about them lions, and I would have been thinking about that fire. But that old king said he was going to throw them in there anyway. Yep. And they said, and it did. if God decides to deliver, I'll paraphrase, if God decides to deliver us, then we'll be delivered. And if He don't, we're not going to bow to you. Just go ahead and throw us in the fire. That's boldness. That's courage from the Holy Ghost. And that's exactly what He does, Sister Hope. He gives us courage. And He gives us strength. And He gives us power. And He gives us peace. And He gives us joy. And He gives us love. How can we rejoice when the world is turned upside down? How can we praise when things are so bad we don't even know how, where the help's coming from? You know what we have to do? Sometimes we just have to trust I had a wonderful person to show up on my job site today. Brother Derek, I don't know why I don't make a whole lot of money. But you know what? God's took care of us. And Penny and I talk all the time. We might not have everything we want. As a matter of fact, I was really discouraged not too long ago. And I said, "Hun, I said, what are we going to do? Something's got to give. I'm going to have to go back to driving a truck or do something because we just ain't. And of course, we laid there and we discussed everything and how this wouldn't work and that wouldn't work. And I was really discouraged. And I told Penny, I said, honey, just look at the situation. We don't have nothing. What a terrible complaint. And she asked me a question. Sister Sandra, that I couldn't answer. You know what that question was? What do we need? Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all oh, didn't hear what I said. <laughs> Man showed up on the job site today, Brother Derek. We went outside talking together. Next thing I know, he done laid $200 in my hand. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we need to pray more. We need to seek God more. It's hard to fast, ain't it? Y'all have a hard problem fasting? Y'all have a problem fasting? It's hard sometimes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a sacrifice. Yes, it is. That's what it is. That's a real sacrifice. And every time you go to site trying to fast, somebody shows up and won't buy you lunch dinner, don't you? <laughs> I'm not saying nothing about anybody here. Anytime y'all want to buy me lunch, oh, come on. I'll go to dinner with you. I am not complaining. That's why I don't fast on Sunday. I like to eat. God loves the cycle. God is in this house. Look around. Look to your right, Sister Shirley. Look around, y'all. Go ahead and look around. Do you see? No, not with your natural eyes, you don't. But that don't mean he ain't here. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> Praise the Lord God is in the house, Dustin. <laughs> I love the Lord. Are you going to shut up in a minute? I tell you what, when you get in God's presence, when I used to be an alcoholic, and I said used to be, because when God saved me, I wasn't one anymore. That's right. 
Thank God for that. But I used to try to drink all I could drink, Sister Xander. Wanted mine and everybody else's. Wouldn't it be nice if we was all like that when we come to church? We just wanted to grab the jug and drink. I'm not Amen. talking about that kind, y'all. But I'm talking about God's jug. Amen. And just drink it on down. Don't you want to do that? Am I the only one here who wants to do that? No, I'm not. I know y'all love the Lord too many. And I know you felt the Spirit of God, and I know it's getting late, and i got to let you go too. I know that. And I'm going to. Just a minute. Praise the Lord. Can somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody love the praise you. Praise <laughs> I got two hands up, brother. Two hands. Double hand. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I think, Brother Derek, that I'm doing. I hope that I said something. I had two messages. And I was talking to God. And I, said, I said, God, where does this other one go? Y'all get to hear. 